Good morning. I hear the sound of work. I hear the sound of somebody taking care of something that should be taken care of. That's that lawn next door. <laughs> anyway, this is God has given us, this is a day that God has given us to get into the, one of the books that I had to take my time and read it and let it come together and marinate and give me an understanding that I've never seen before in my life. Hopefully that you will get the same understanding because I am going to take my time. Father, I thank you this morning because you have kept your word again. Today you have kept your word. You have been so delighted for me to know your mind. I scratched and I said, Lord, what is this? I searched and I found some gold and I found some good understanding and I got the knowledge of God. And this is coming from Numbers 18. And uh, thank you for, the more I say this, and I not understand why Jesus said it. Do you not know that the more you say, Father, forgive me of my sins and, and help me to forgive those that have sinned against me? Do you know when you say that, that you build up that forgiveness on the inside? Do you know that? Those are not just mere words that Jesus left us to say. Listen to the sound of work. Y'all yeah, just don't know what it's, not, what it's like to have. And maybe some of you, good neighbors, somebody will mow their yard. Cut down the hedge. That's what you hear. I started to come a little later, but I didn't know they were coming this morning. But anyway, when we say, Lord, forgive us, and then forgive us our best as we forgive those who have wronged us, that builds you up, and you are fortified with that forgiveness, and you don't hold grudges as quickly, as quickly. When we realize we have to speak those words, and then we'll have what we say. So you say, uh, according to Matthew, the sixth chapter, Lord, forgive me of my sins as I forgive those who have sinned against me. And watch your fortified body, senses, emotions line up with the word. Say it daily. And then don't be the offender. You might be the one that's being offended, but don't be the one that that is offending. Watch those ending letters, suffix. All right, I want to say these names until we can get them in our understanding. The 12 sons of Israel, these are the representation of God's class. And he has been using these boys or these young men or these men or these people ever since he spoke to Abraham. Reuben, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Dan, Neptali, Gad, Asher, Issachar, Zebulun, Joseph, Benjamin. <laughs> I was teaching this to my granddaughter yesterday. I was really trying to gain and understand how to memorize it myself, but I, I'm getting it. I got it, I think. But anyway, I'm going to read it. Reuben, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Dan, Neptali, Gad, Asher, Issachar, Zebulun, Joseph, and Benjamin. So every once in a while, I'll be saying those names until which is, the reason why I'm doing that is so that you can understand God's order and who he used to carry out his plan. These are the children of Israel, and that's what we are talking about today. All right, in this chapter, chapter 19, chapter 18, I'm sorry, it's going to be talking about the, um, it's going to be talking about the order of how God wants his uh, a temple, his tabernacle. And I know that this may might be a subject that people sort of wash away. But if you listen this morning and get the simplicity of the word of God, I post it in my in my in my feed. So I'm gonna try to start posting what I'm going to read the day before for the next day. So if you are interested in reading, so that you will have the knowledge of God before you and not just listening to somebody, actually reading it for yourself and see if it lines up then uh, you can have a copy of that. Good morning. Uh, 
who was it? Jay Brown, that's all I can say. <laughs> um, anyway, um, we're going to find out how God wants his temple ran then and how God wants the temple ran now. Very simple. So we're going to be talking about, listen to this, we're going to be talking about the priest and the priest's charge or his assignment. We're going to be talking about the Levites, their charge and their assignment. We're going to be talking about the Israelites, their charge and assignment. So once we get these three people or these three groups of people assigned, then we'll understand the, the simplicity of God's word to us. I wanted to say something that uh, I might have, I hope it comes back to me. But we're going to find out what is God's primary function for the priest. Don't ignore it because it's simple. Because if this word is not given so children can eat it, then it's not from God. If you sit in front of people and they don't have the word of God or the word of God or the word from God in their hand and they're just talking out of their mind. I printed mine today. I normally have my Bible in my hand. But this is the word of God. I am not going to be talking out of my head because I think it's foolishness. And all these pages right here, I just printed because this is the NIV and I don't have a, a, a hard copy. I have the hard copy of the KJV, but today I wanted to explain this from the NIV so I had to copy it. So if anybody ever teaches you without the word of God, run. If they're just standing there talking out of their head, run. That is not information from God. That's, that's, that's foolishness. I don't care if it sounds like, well, that's, you know, I like that. I don't care if we do like it. If it doesn't come from the Word of God and it's not supported by where you can go home and read the same thing, uh, don't listen. we are wasting time. All right, let's talk about the priest. Before I get in the Word, I want to define who we're talking about. The primary function of the priest. The function of the priest is to administer the church's seven sacraments, baptism, confirmation, confession, holy communion, marriage, holy orders, and anointing of the sick. Uh, the priest is also is to visit the sick, oversee the religious education program, and generally provide pastoral care to their parishioners. In God's time, in the Bible times, the priest was a mediator between man and God. Some duties of the priest were mostly to take care of the Lord's house and to raise sheep and lambs for the daily sacrifice. They are to welcome any sinner who came to the Lord as to the Lord to ask for forgiveness. So the priest had a position in God that he had a direct contact with God. It's, it's, in other words, the priest was God's word in action. If God wanted something done and he wanted to communicate with man, the priest was the person that God spoke through and then he got and he carried out the orders of God in order to get the atonement. He's the mediator. He represented man and then he took back from man and represented God. So he was the bridge that connected God to man. So we want to understand who is the priest. The priest was God's hanging buddy if I can see it like that. But don't get mad at that. Because what God was doing was like, I'm not like man now. So he said, don't ever, com don't ever compare. If you see me hanging out with a man, it's not like a man hanging out with a man. It's God and man. And with that being said, like if your boss always had a friend that he hung out with and he told certain things to that he didn't tell anybody else, God said, I'm not like that. This guy that I'm hanging out with is we are always involved in who you are and what we can do to make things right for you. He's just my ear listening to my voice to say what I said, and it's all about you. So God has said, don't, don't get it twisted. Just because you see me hanging out with Aaron, and right now we're going to talk about Aaron, and yes, of course you know I'm talking about Moses, God. Moses is, is the word of God expressed himself. Whatever God said, Moses was the man that God used to make sure that the priest and everybody else were following instructions. That was just the way he was the leader of the people, making sure that everybody, Moses had to report to God. 
He had to talk to the priest, and sometimes God talked to both. But just understand, if God is right now talking to Aaron, he is saying, Aaron is my person of interest that I'm talking to. But guess what? I want you to know what Aaron and I are talking about, because we have no secrets. Because the, you know what we talk about? We talk about you. It's all about you. Aaron is my prototype. He is my, I don't want to say my practice run, but he's what I'm going to give you so you can understand when I give you my son. I'm giving you the best. So Aaron, if you see Aaron and I together, don't get jealous because we're talking about you. And Aaron knows that position that he has. If you don't do you right, I'll kill him. So let's just get that together so you can understand my relationship with this man called the priest. And Aaron is who God is talking about. His role in what we are talking about. So we're going to show what God is saying concerning everybody. So the next time you give an offering, I promise you, after, her, after hearing this, you're going to be a cheerful giver. You are not going to be confused because God is going to let you in on the light. And somebody had to stay with God and try to say, okay, Lord, no, what is this? What is this? What are you asking? Read, read Numbers 19. And I believe if you get to understand, you are going to be a child forgiver. All right? Now, the next person that we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about the Levites. These are the next person of interest. I'm telling you these so when you start reading it, you'll understand these are the people that support it. They, were, they are the background. They are the people that's not seen. They are the people that uh, don't get the credit for uh, uh, being who they are. They are the people that... Excuse me for a minute. What? I can't hear. Can you do what? Why can't you, excuse me for a minute, why can't you use Matthew car? I mean, it don't matter to me, but I'm just saying, I'm not sure. Anyway, back to the subject. I guess so, Phil, you coming right back? All right, oh, excuse me, y'all. All up in the business. This is what God tells you, you're in my business. Okay, it's okay. <laughs> anyway, the Levites were the people that was behind the scenes but they were always causing the scene. In other words, they made sure that the tabernacle was set up, broken down, handled right. They were the gift that God gave to the priest and said, you stay in line with the people directly. These people are going to be indirectly helping you making sure that you are provided with all of the things needed. In other words, if the priests were, if the Levites were considered in our day, they would be the janitors. They would be the secretaries. They would be the uh, people that, that deal with the lights. They would be the people that anything, they would make sure that the, that the lights were turned on. They would make sure that the water was working. They would make sure that the tissue was in the restroom. They would make sure that the people, anything that concerned the people and what they needed, the covering, they would make sure that the paint outside of the temple was, was ready. They would make sure that the, the lawn was cut. They was making sure that every, every nail in the building was, if, they, if something needed to be adjusted, they would make sure that it's adjusted. So the Levites were the people that held the temple together and making sure that everything that the priests could use to communicate with the people that it was done. In other words, they kept things going. And we're not talking about a few people. We're talking about thousands. I think we're talking about over 8,000 people, the Levites. They had to be prepared. They didn't have, they didn't, they didn't wear the, the, um, they were just the operating forces that kept the temple alive and kept it going and thriving. There's so much noise going on in here, but I like the sound of people doing what they're doing. Oh, the Levites. You hear the sound of the Levites.
these are the people that we overlook in the church. And we just say, in our day, they don't get much credit. They almost have to wait on a dime. Because my son, I said, what, 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 what? Excuse me. I'm looking at my son backing up my car like that. I'm sorry. Y'all see me upset and I am very much upset. You know what? Ooh. I'm upset. But let me get back together because anyway. The Levites were the people that, that, that made sure that everything that God needs to function and have his word as a, per, as a place that was preserved. The Levites were God's gift. He gave that as a gift to, to the priest so that the priest could hear a word from God. But watch how God plays this thing out. And then our last people that we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about, um, these are the other people. The, the, the descendants of Reuben, uh, Reuben the descendants of Simeon, the descendants of Judah, the descendant I just call a name, Dan, Naphtali, Gad, Asher, Issachar, Zebulon, Joseph, and Benjamin. All of these were descendants of Jacob, who's now is Israel. These are the Israelites. The only somebody separated from these people is the Levites or the Levites. And when you put the ITS in it, it's not saying that they were creepy people. That's just what you call the, the clan or the people. When they come in as a family, you, call, you add I, ITS to it, ITS. So when you hear this, it's not just saying, it's just saying who they were related to. Levites, Judaites, Danites, Neptalites, Gadites, Ashites, Issachites. I'm just saying Reubenites. So when you add ITS, you're saying you're talking about their descendants. Again, that is the sound that you hear of the Levites. They are working. All right, so everybody else except the Levites are called Israelites right now. So Levites are Israelites, but they are set aside for a particular use to carry out God's plan. All right, now let's go straight to the word. We got that part down. All right, Numbers 18. The Lord said to Aaron, talking to Aaron, Aaron is the high priest. Let me give you your assignment. You, you your sons and your family are to bear a responsibility bear the responsibility of offenses connected with the sanctuary. And you and your sons alone are to bear the responsibility for offenses connected with the priesthood. So in other words, let me just tell you your job, Aaron. You're close to me. But you are the one I'm going to hold accountable for everything that happened in this place. And if you mess around and don't follow my instruction, you will die. That's how serious I'm. You walk with me. And the closer you get to me, and you're close, and you don't carry out my orders the way that they're supposed to be carried out, you hear this error and your family, you will die. So while Cora and all that group of people are trying to get to your position, they don't understand that this is no joke walking with me. The closer I get to you, the more I reveal to you and you become more like me, I hold you accountable. So. Aaron had to understand it. He, he understood it. You take this position, it's yours. And it's going to go down from yours to yours and yours and, and everything that comes out of you. I created you to carry out this plan. Has, did Aaron ever mess up? He did. God called him in. But well, Aaron recognized his own sin. Him and his sister running their mouth too much. But I already went through that, so you have to go back to that chapter and pull that chapter and see what God said through my understanding. He said, now that you understand that who you are and the position that you hold, bring your fellow Levites from your ancestral tribe to join you. 
and assist you when you and your sons minister before the tent of the covenant law. All right, go get your cousins. Get your cousins, the other Levites that came from Levi. Aaron, your family is separated. Your brothers and uncle, I mean, your people that's connected to you, they're called the Levites. I'm pulling your family. You, coming straight out of you, is the priest that's going to line up forever. And, and your uh, Levite brothers came from Levi. Levi, these are the people that's going to support you in making sure that everything that sounds like these lawnmowers, they're going to make sure everything is set up right and taken down right. He said, they are to be responsible, to the, you know, the Levites, now not talking about the priests now, the Levites, they are to be responsible to you and are to perform all the duties of the tent. But they must not go near the furnishing of the sanctuary of the altar. Otherwise, both you and they will die. So I'm going to have you and I'm going to have the Levites. The Levites don't work for nobody else but the temple of God. The Levites' assignment is to make sure that the temple of God is always arrayed right. They don't they don't work for the bread company. They don't work for they don't work for the everything that they do concerns my house. That's the Levites' part. I don't mind that word Levite. They're gonna make some sense out of while. They are to join you and be responsible for the care of the tent of meeting. All the work at the tent. And no one else may come near where you are. The Levites, Aaron, you talking to Aaron, are going to support you in everything concerning this temple. You're going to be in there working and in, in, in that word. You're going to be making sure that the word is rightly divided. You're going to make sure that the word is rightly taught. And the Levites going to make sure that what you're teaching in is provided. He said, you are to be responsible for the care of the sanctuary and the altar so that my wrath will not fall on the Israelites again. Yesterday in chapter 17, it's, it's kind of hard to teach with all the noise, but yesterday in chapter 17, God had to get rid of some folk. And at the end of chapter 17, the children of Israel asked the question to Moses, said, all we're going to do is come in and die and be consumed? And the Lord said, no, because I'm going to straighten this out today. He told Aaron, you are to be responsible for the care of the sanctuary. You got to make sure. Don't just leave it up to the, to the, in other words, you guys mourn your yard. Go out there and check and make sure they mourn it right. They building your house. I'm not leaving you to Aaron, you make sure that what they are doing, they're carrying it out right. Don't get relaxed. You got a hard job to do. You may not be doing the job, but I'm giving you the will to know how the job ought to be done, Aaron. So when the Levites come in to do their job, I'm holding you responsible. If they don't do it right, I'm coming to you. You just like the boss. If the, if the school fails, I'm coming to the person in charge of the school. So don't, don't go in your office and sit down and tell me, yeah, the people got together. Mm -hmm. I didn't call you to be a king. I call you to make sure that everything is orchestrated and being done correctly. That's your position. You're seeking me, but at the same time, you're watching. You're watching to make sure. Because when it's done, there's no need to holler at me once they done did it wrong when I gave you permission and the authority to make sure they carry it out right. So if somebody out there mowing your yard, go out there and check and see if they mowing it right. Go out there and check it and see if they're leaving with their edge of right. That's your job, Aaron. Making sure that the Levites that are a gift to you are carrying out the orders that I gave them. But you've got to make sure that it's done right. And I'm going to have my eyes on you. Then the six verses, I myself have selected. 
I myself have selected. You got to come in my yard now. Good morning. He said, I myself have selected you. Look, hold on a minute. The Lord said, I, I orchestrated it. I designed this. I myself have selected your fellow Levites from among the Israelites as a gift to you, dedicated to the Lord to do the work of the tent of meeting. I selected them. I selected them to know how to handle the curtains. I selected them to know how to handle the poles. I selected them that once you cover that, the, the Ark of the Covenant, and you cover the brazen altar, and you cover the things that they are to carry on their shoulder. That brazen offering will not be on a cart. That thing is going to be carried. It's got to be held on to. These guys, and you're talking about over 8,000 people. I am the one. I make sure that they're doing the job right. I select these people. And where did the Levites come from? They were the first sons of Levi, the firstborn, and God gathered those people and he made them the the the, the people that over they, they were the contractors of the tent or the tabernacle. He said, but only you and your sons may serve as priests in connection with everything at the altar and inside the curtain. I'm holding you responsible to know the word of God. I'm, a, I'm holding you, Aaron, responsible to make sure that you take the time to read this word. I'm holding you responsible, Aaron, your position. You are the one that I am going to make sure that I'm watching everything that you do. And the moment that you say anything out of line, according to what I said, I will kill you. I'm giving you the service of the priesthood as a gift. He said, do you know what it's like to hang out with me? It's a gift to hang out with me. Anybody don't understand who I am, it's a gift to be called by my name. It's a gift that I allow you to live and some die. It's a gift to be known by the Lord has selected you, called you out, and now made you a part of that royal, royal priesthood. It's a gift to know that I'm telling you what you got to do so the people that I have planned after my son go through the process, what he has to do, that they gonna have the same thing and the same relationship with me that you got with me, Aaron. It's a gift. I'm gonna give everybody after when I get through this thing, I'm giving everybody. Everybody's jealous of you gonna get the same thing. They just got to wait their turn. <laughs> but I'm using you now. He said, I am giving you the service of the priesthood as a gift. It's a gift to, to, to be able to walk in the Father's presence and he talks to you. Do you not know that God's word is supreme above any educational system we got on earth? That he gives you the insight why they struggling trying to find the answer that because you're in the word, it's a gift for you to know the answer. I'm giving you the service of the priesthood as a gift. Anyone else who comes near the sanctuary is to be put to death. Right now, set aside the part. And when we get through it, this is going to make sense. If anybody else come near the sanctuary is to be put to death. If anybody else try to say anything else other than what I said, you're going to die. And carry out, since you've been my mouthpiece, and carry out my plan. Just understand this. Your position is going to be multiplied. But right now, we're going to stick with you. Then the Lord said to Aaron, I myself have put you in charge of the offerings presented to me. Aaron. All of the offerings, the bulls, the heifers, 
the cows. You in charge of that. Oh, I know what you're thinking when we're talking about the United, how we do it in the United States, but let's see what the word said. All the holy offering the Israelites give me, I give to you and your sons as a portion, your perpetual share. So when you go in there and you get that, that cow, and you get that lamb, and you get that bull, and you get that, um, that goat, when you get through doing your part with them and burning that part, the rest of that that's coming from that, that belongs to the priest. One thing I'm gonna tell y'all, what God was serving these folk, they had some food. They were never hungry. Jesus said, if I was hungry, I, I didn't have to tell you, cause my father, the way he had this thing planned, the priest, all they, he, the priest didn't have to worry about a house note. He didn't have to worry about land. He didn't have to worry about going to court. All the priest, the priest didn't have to do nothing. Cause God, is said, I got you. And I want you to be the example of how I want to do the world. I want the world to realize that when you are under me and you serve as a priest and walking before me and doing what I say do, I got everything that you need. There would be nothing that would be here from you. Because you already know this earth is not your home. But I'm going to provide you everything that you need. He said, so don't come in here talking about talking to me like a Gentile. Gentiles seek stuff. But you walking in with me, and this is, this is something that's making sense to me. God said, I got the priest so well orchestrated, all they need to do is just sit down and eat. <laughs> I ain't trying to get them, to, I'm not trying to get them. A, the, the priest was not sitting down waiting on somebody to come bow down to him. The priest was working. And the Lord was feeding him, because that's all he needed. He said, you ought to have the part of the most holy offering that is kept from the fire. In other words, the portion of the fire that didn't burn, that belonged to the priest said, pass me the fork. In the knife. Pass me something so I can eat that part or that portion that was offered. From all the gifts they bring me as most holy offerings, whether grain or sin or gift offerings, they are that part belongs to you and your sons. God said, let me listen, let me give y'all an understanding. He said, the offerings that was brought to me, I wanted it right. Why? Because I'm going to give it back to the priest. When you present and give God the first, the best, and you carefully selected it, and you offered it up to God, God said, is it right? Did they do it right? Did, did they do it right? And you say, yes, Lord, we did it right. This belonged to you. Then the Lord said, you can have it. I'm giving it to the priest. The one that's just representing my word. It's like I'm giving it to myself. You can have it. Did they select it right? Did When you burn it, did you do it right? Are you sure it's right? And then you say, here, Lord, God said, no, that's yours. That's why I want it done right. Why? Because I want to give it back to you. He said, so eat it as something most holy. Every male should eat it. He said, I want every male, every man that's got a, got a seed on the inside of him. Every man shall eat it. You must regard it as holy. I see people just working this morning. Isn't that a beautiful thing? You must regard it as holy. This is also, this also is yours. Whatever is set aside from the gifts of all the wave offering of the Israelites, so when the Israelites bring their offering and you wave it before me, I give this to you and your sons and daughter as your perpetual share. In other words, God has said, I'm going to make sure that the priests are fed. They're going to eat my word and then I'm going to supply their food. They're going to hear my word and I'm going to supply their food. The only thing that you need to eat. The only thing that you need to give the priest is something to eat. Because everything else is prepared for him. Everyone in your household is who is ceremonially clean may eat it. So tell your children that right. Tell your children that as long as they do the right thing, they can eat of the same thing that the priest can eat. Where we get that that the priest didn't have no wife? Oh yeah, children too.
if they wanted to. I give you all the finest olive oil and the finest new wine and the grain they give the Lord as the first fruit of their harvest. In other words, he's still talking about something what to eat. He said, I'm going to give you the finest bread. I'm going to give you the finest oil. And I'm going to give you the finest wine. I'm going to make sure that you would never, ever, ever have to worry about anything to eat or drink. And I'm talking to the priest. Now, I'm allowed what I said. I'm going to care that you eat and drink. Keep, keep reading. All the land's first fruit that they bring to the Lord will be yours. Everyone in your household who is ceremonially clean may eat it. God still said, I'm going to feed you. Everything in Israel that is devoted to the Lord is yours. Everything that has been set aside to be whatever has got my name on it, it belongs to the priest. And keep watching now. Keep working. The first offspring of every woman, both human and animal, that is offered to the Lord is yours. So anybody that have, has a baby for the first time and is a boy, he said, that's yours. You can, you can have the first, he said, I want, he said, every baby that come through the matrix or come through the, that breaks the, the part that a woman start giving birth to, if it's a boy, now she can't have an abortion, she can't have a miscarriage. It has to be the first one alive male. He said, that belonged to the priest. We're going to get this thing straight now. Stay with it. I know this. Don't get this curve. God gonna, I promise you, this is good. All right. The first offspring of every womb, both human and animal, that is offered to the Lord is yours. He said, that's why I want the best. I want you to understand, give me the best because I'm going to give it back to you. That's why if you give me anything that's not right, I don't, I'm not going to use it because I, I, I don't want you to have what I wouldn't take. That's why you got to be selective about what you do because when you give it to me, I'm going to give it back to you. Just, uh, think about it. If you give me something that's not about anything and I give it back to you, you can say, I did that. Uh-uh. That's right. why I say select what you want and make sure that it's the right thing to do because I am going to give it back to you. That's why I told Cain. Do you understand that what you just said, you're getting ready to give it to me, I'm getting ready to give it back to you? Do you want that? Do you want what you give? That's why Jesus said, whatever you do to others, you do it as you want them to do it to you, because that was God's plan from the beginning. He said, why well, I got you out there searching, and you looking, and you trying to give me something holy. He said, all I'm trying to send back waiting is for you to bring it to me so I can give it right back to you, the priest. And who are the priests? Anybody that Jesus cut their curtain open and walked in and said, I can come in now. Oh, we talking about us now. Just wait, we're going to get them. I know what we've been taught, but I know what the word said. He said, when, he said, when they are a month old, if a baby is a month old, I've already given you the order, what you had to bring to redeem that baby. He said, if he's a month old, go through the process and if I can't have him, then I'm going to give you the right to redeem him. But we're going to talk about that too. When they are a month old, you must redeem them at the redemption price. Set at five shekels of silver, according to the sanctuary shekel, which weighs 20 geras. So God is saying, it's a process. If the animal that you bring in me, now we're going to talk about the, the, the baby now. Let's say you got a little boy, and that's the first one you got. No miscarriage, no abortion. Just the first child you got. That child belongs to the Lord. This is talking to the Israelites. And I think I'm going to go down there. And you, Okay, let's just keep going, and I'll show, show you. It said, um, but if you want to redeem that boy, you just said, no, I think I want to keep my son. Then you are to bring the price in place of the child that you're keeping as, an, as a redemption to say, I want to redeem my son even though I know that he belongs to the Lord, but so that God would know that I'm not absent from doing my part 
here's my part for my son. And then you gave an offer in exchange for the use of the son like uh, Samuel's mama gave to Eli the priest. And Eli is in the lineage of Aaron. And when she brought that boy in there, and she gave, she let that boy go. And, he, and, and, and Samuel served Eli. But just in case she decided she didn't want to leave little Sammy with Eli, she had to bring an offering to say, I'm doing my part in exchange to keep my son. He had to be redeemed, but she let him go. When they are a month old, you must redeem them at the redemption price set at five shekels of silver according to the sanctuary shekel, which weighs 20 garas. But you must not redeem the firstborn of a cow, sheep, or a goat. They are holy gods. And as soon as that sheep have a firstborn, that's mine. Can't redeem it. That goat, when it's firstborn, can't redeem it. When that um, uh, cow, firstborn, that's mine. We ain't going to be no negotiating. All that's mine. All right, he said. When you do that, splash their blood against the, splash their blood against the altar and burn that fat, their fat, as a food offering, an aroma pleasing to the Lord. So he's saying, now the child, you can have him back as long as you put something in his place. But when it comes down to the animals, no, you, that's mine. Don't even try it. Their meat is to be yours, just as the breast of the way to offer in the right thigh are yours. So certain parts of the animal being sacrificed, the priest had a right to eat it. Whatever is set aside from the holy offerings the Israelite presents to the Lord, I give to you and your sons and your daughters as a perpetual share. Your family is going to be well fed. Now we are talking about food for the priest. The priest didn't have to worry about anything. But check this out. Stay with the word. It is an everlasting covenant of salt before the Lord for both you and your offspring. God said, I'm going to take care of you and your family as long as you stay in my word. It is nothing like what we do. I'm not done yet. It is exactly what he said. The priest was to hear the word of God to make sure that the, the care of the temple was being done, right, rightly done and he was to be fed. Did God say celebrate his birthday? He did not. God said, send him on a, a, on a journey. He did not. Is that your church's responsibility? He did not. He said, what did he tell him? That they were to be hearers of my word and communicate with the people what I said. Bring back the people's behavior to God and let's make an atonement for whatever needs to be going on. That's your job and I'm going to feed you. I'm not setting you up to be like the world. So let's just keep reading so we can see what we're saying. Because I know what we think. The Lord said to Aaron, you will have no inheritance in their land, nor will you have any share among them. I am your share and your inheritance among the Israelites. He said, you the priest, you won't have anything that belongs to you in this land. You are, your sole purpose is to let me live out in you and I'm going to provide everything that you need to be sustained. You ain't got. You do not have to worry about land. You don't have to worry about houses. You don't have to worry about cars. You don't have to worry about nothing. All you need to do is don't worry. All you need to do is hear my voice and say what I said. Now let's get down. I am the share. I am your share of your inheritance among the Israelites. In other words, I got you. You will never see a priest walking around talking about anything to eat. You'll never find him hungry. Never, never will he say, I don't have anything to eat. I don't care if it's a drought, the priest will eat. I don't care if it's a, I don't care what's, I don't care if nobody else got anything to eat, the priest gonna eat. But I gotta hear, I gotta make sure my word is being executed. I can't have anybody a week carry my word. The priest got to eat. <laughs> but however, let's keep going. He said, from now on, the Israelite must go to, to, go near from now on the Israelite must not go near the tent of meeting or they will bear the consequences of their sin and will die so all that stuff that Korah and all them folk did yesterday or day before yesterday tell them Israelites stay away that's not their job right They're, stay away Israelites I'm focusing on 
the priests and the Levites. Just because you're related to them, you still got to stay in your place. All right? So we got the priests, we got the Levites, and we got the Israelites. Everybody got a place. So the people that got houses and tents and land and all that stuff, he said, you stay, you, you go to work. You make sure you, 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 you be on time. I mean, it was like, good morning. Good morning. He said, now you got to go to work. You got to go build up cars. You got to cut down the trees. You got to make sure the road. You got to do the negotiation. You got to go to the hospital. You got to do all that. That's what it was like. Now, the Levites, they don't have a job like that. Their job is to take care of the temple. And the priest, his job is to hear the word and make sure that the word is correctly uh, being done, executed. All right? Underline them, Levi. From now on, the Israelites must not go near the tent of meeting, or they will bear the consequence of their sin and will die. It is the Levites who are to do the work at the tent of the meeting and bear the responsibility for any offenses that they commit against it. Say, Levites? The workers of the temple and the temple only. And be careful because if you do anything, you got no business. You gonna bear it, and you are going to be the one that I got a problem with. This is a lasting ordinance for the generation to come. They will receive no inheritance among the uh, Israelites. So Levites, your inheritance does not come from uh, the Levites. I mean the uh, Israelites. Instead, this is what God is saying. Your inheritance, anybody connected to me don't have to worry about stuff. The priests don't have to worry about stuff. The Levites don't have to worry about stuff. And this is how we're going to make sure they get the stuff that they need. They don't have to worry about it. He said, I give to the Levite as their inheritance the tithes. I give to Levite the tithes. First time I ever read that in my life. Now, who are the Levites? The people that mow the yard. The people that make sure the temple is provided for. He said, I give the Levites the tithes. That's what the word said. Instead, I give to the Levite as their inheritance the tithes that the Israelite present as an offering to the Lord. I give the Levites the tithes. I give the people that's working to make sure that the temple is is is, is rightly hanging right, mowed right, painted right, operating right. They are the one that gets the tithes. So much going on this morning. <laughs> the Levites. Y'all go get this. This scripture now. All right, this is what the word says. He said, instead, I give to the Levites as their inheritance the tithes that the Israelites present as an offering to the Lord. Can I say it again? I give the people that go to work and make sure that the temple is, is, is operating correctly. You get the tithes. What y'all been doing with the tithes? He said, the tithes belong to the Levites. He said, the tithe that comes out of the people that went to work outside of the temple brought their tithes to Aaron, and Aaron gave the tithes. The tithes belong to the Levites. God said, I ain't playing. He said, I forgive you because you didn't know. But let me just put this out so you can understand it. Instead, I give to the Levite as their, and I told you you're going to be a happy giver. Now you got to know, whatever is keeping that church floating, I give to the Levites the tithes. The Levites, not the priest. The Levites. The Levite, the priest gonna get something to eat. 
Now, I ain't, he's not, I'm not through now. I'm not through. But the hard work, the Bible says, instead I give to the Levite as they inherit the tithes that the Israelite present as an offering to the Lord. That is why I said concerning them, they will have no inheritance among the Israelites. I ain't, I'm taking care of these folks. They take care of my stuff. I take care of their stuff. So go tell everybody who wanted to know what the tithes go. It goes to the people that's taking care of the place that God can dwell. Because the most important thing is for the priest to hear a word from God and make sure he got something to eat. And his family can eat. But the tithes belong to the Levites. It belongs to the people that cut the yard. It belongs to the people that's making sure that the temple is right. That's where the tithes go. And that's if you want to do it right now. Now, if you can do it like you've been doing it, then you can keep doing it like that. And God said, I'm going to take my name off that place and I'll destroy you for messing around with my word. He said, the tithes go to the Levites. And what we need to know is find out who is the Levites. Them the workers. Underline that, the workers. Don't that make sense? That the people that's doing the work in the church, you're not supposed to be volunteering. You're supposed to be paid. Why? Because you're faithful to give all your service and make sure it's a temple so that when the people come in, it makes sense now. It makes sense now. That when the people get off work and they got a place to go and worship, you did everything to make sure it was right for them. But they told you that you supposed to be getting paid by God later. And you supposed to do the work and just trust the Lord to make provide for you. God said, no, that's a lie. He said, when the people pay the tithe, then you're supposed to get a tithe to the Levites. Wh whoever keep my house looking right, they get the tithe. But I'm not done yet. I'm just trying to show you what God had planned. But we don't stay before him long enough to get the plan. So we run out and go do anything. And so we, it looked like God said, you a lie. You a lie. To my, I, don't, my, I don't run my house like that. Let me say it again. The tithes belong to the Levite. Who are the Levite? The people that mowed the yard. The people that painted, that kept the carpet going. That flushed the toilets. The janitors. The, um, they ain't supposed to strain the church for that. The people that go out to work, which is the Israelite, brought the money or brought the tithes to the church, the apples and the oranges and the fruit, whatever it was, but now we exchanged the money. They got the money and it went to the Levites because God said, my house got to be clean. It got to be tight. That is their job is to make my house look right. It's the Levites. The Lord said to me, okay, and then he said, instead of, this is, 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 is 1824. Instead, I give the Levite as their inherit the tithe that the Israelite present as an offering to the Lord. They can't get no better than that. It's clear. You don't take away from the people that's doing the work and tell them God bless you. You pay those people. But you have crowned yourself as a king. God said, I ain't in there. I know what I said. This is not the first time I said it. I'm just saying it again. Because the folk that didn't do it right, I'm, I'm planning for all 40 years of them folks to get out of here. I'm trying to raise these kids up so they'll know how to operate when it come down and they won't get greedy and start thinking that somebody owe you something because you said, I'm the leader. He said, the leader is not the one that get the tithes. It's the people that work and behalf to support the leader as a gift to the leader. They get the tithes. Now, don't that make you want to go in your pocket and give to somebody because they're going to operate it right because now you got God's word on it and now you're not confused? All right, but then this is what God said. Instead, I give to the Levite as their inheritance of the tithes that the Israelite present as an offering to the Lord. That is why I said concerning them, they will have no inheritance among the Israelites. They ain't got to worry about no stuff. The Lord said to Moses, speak to the Levites. Now, however, the tithes go to the Levites, but the Levites had to pay tithes. The tithes went to the Levites, and once the Levites got paid, then they paid tithes, and that's when the priests got 10%. That's what the word said. The Lord said to Moses, speak to the Levites and say to them, when you receive from the Israelite the tithes I give you as an inheritance, you must present a tenth of the tithes as the Lord's offering. Your offering will be reckoned to you as grain from the threshing floor of juice from the wine press. In this way, you also will present an offering to the Lord from all of the tithes you receive from the Israelites. So you take the tithe from the Israelites and give it to the Levites. From these tithes, you must give the Lord a portion to Aaron, the priest. So then the Levites then give tithes to the priest. Isn't that, don't that make sense? Don't that make sense? That the people of God that has the jobs to go out and be excellent teachers, excellent contractors, excellent tree cutters, 
uh, Excel and all these names that they got to hide behind you, a tree cutter. Excellent lawnmowers, excellent painters, excellent child care, excellent uh, uh, um, people over the jail, excellent governors. You are the Israelite. You are God's hands, your fingers. Then you bring what you have to protect the people that's keeping God's house in order. And then the people that's keeping God's house in order make sure that the priest has something to That's God's plan. You're not supposed to have a, a, a opaque vision of God and how he operates behind the finance department. Everybody's supposed to know I gave tithes and the tithes went to the help of the people that served God and made sure that God's house was protected. Out of that tithes, then those people gave a portion to the priest. We got it twisted. We got it unorganized. And what do we need to do? Fall on our face and ask God to forgive us and bring an offering to say we ain't going to do that no more. You're supposed to know, I told you, when God was hanging out with Aaron, God was not like man that got a secret going on. God said, I'm telling you the secret. This has always been my plan, but nobody stayed in my presence long enough to read my word to find out how I ran things. So you made up things. You made things up and then you put it out in my name and that's why the world hate me. That's why the people, when they give, they give mad. They know I got to have some, but they don't know how to give. So you go to work and get the money that you, get the goods, and we, we do money these days, and you take it, and then you give it to the people that make sure that everything is organized because my house got to look good. I don't want my house looking like that, that you haven't been taking care of the concrete. Call the concrete people. Get the tires, and when they get through doing it, pay them people and don't put them on hold. That's not, your, that's, not, that's not your job. And the priest had to make sure that the Levites got the tithes. And then the tithes that the Levites gave was given to the priest. And God said, that's how that thing's supposed to work. You and your household may eat the rest. And he told the Levites, when, the, when you present the best part, it would be reckoned to you as the product of the threshing floor of the wine press. In other words, keep giving God the best. So the best is only, in other words, if the Israelite got, brought God the best, and God took the best and gave it to the people that took care of the outside of the temple, and then they took the best and gave it to the person that was in charge of the word, he said, that's how the whole thing worked. That's the word of God. That's the first time I ever saw it in my life. Because I'm going to tell you something, I'm tired, but I was not a happy giver. Because I ain't understand it. I didn't understand what I was doing because this is what we did. We took tithes. We took building fund offerings. We took pastoral offerings. We robbed and robbed and robbed. And then the people, when we got through, when they got through robbing us, then we went outside and robbed our neighbors. Then we robbed the, robbed the, the credit card people. Then we robbed everybody because we, we were robbed from. So when the preachers, the priests robbed from us, they taught us to go rob from others because how in the world can you if God got a plan to say I go to work and then you pay the people that keep the church right and upkeep and then they the one that give the, the priest the pastor an offering don't you know that makes sense so now we all see where our money and how it's flowing we abs absolutely can see what man has set on and, and wouldn't let anybody read and God said that's our plan Claim my order was that everybody giving their best is when the, when the people gave the ten percent. That's the first. Make sure they get theirs first because these people got to be paid. That's why God said you go to work and hurry up and give the ten percent of what you got for the people that's gonna make sure that you got a place to sit on that the carpet is clean because it had to be clean and it had to be right. We got a whole lot. You better be like Zacchaeus going up that tree. And then and Jesus said, Zacchaeus, I need to come to your house. Why did Zacchaeus, God, Jesus need to come to Zacchaeus' house? Because Zacchaeus had stole back some of that stuff. And he didn't do it right. And then he said, Lord, I give back to this. And I, if I took anything, I'm going to give back. And Jesus didn't have no idea. What Jesus said, no, nah, that's all right. I forgave you. No, Jesus said, give it back. Because you stole it. And you didn't do it right. And here it is in plain as day. In Numbers 18. Give the tithes to the Levites, the people that's taking care of everything that's supposed to be taken down and built up. There's, some, there's, there's a lot of people. He said, employ these people. 
Give these people a job and make my house look good. Let my floor, when, they, when the people come off this, come off from, they'd be so glad to come in and got plenty of tissue and, and clean floors and clean glasses and because the, the Levites are making sure that everything is right because it makes sense that when they, when they walk out of my house seeing how clean it is, it rubs off on them and they go home and clean their house up because why? They see a reputation in my house so now you can go home and do the same thing. Don't that make sense? Rather than to give to one man everything, that's why we hate giving. We hate it. We hate it. It's not that we hate it as much. It's just that we didn't understand it. But when God gives an understanding, then now you love it because it makes sense. He said, you and your household may eat the rest of it anyway. He told them, Levi, y'all ain't got to wait. You, 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 you eat your, you go have your picnic on the lawn. And he said to Moses, tell the people, by presenting the best part of it, you will not be guilty in this matter. He said, if you keep that thing flowing like this, you will make me look good. Then you will not defile the holy offerings of the Israelites because you've been taking money from the Israelites. And you will not die. God made sure that he wrung that alarm system I had. This no, I'm going to tell you what God did to wake me up. I had a deposit going into my account, and I heard the sound of it being deposited. And they were letting me know you have got this in your account. And it woke me up, and I knew it was about 4.30, and I said, it's time to get up. I know it's time to read. And first, I was going to like slide back in the bed. I was going to slide back in the bed because I had read, and I thought I had a good understanding. God said, wake up. He said, I want you to be, he said, don't nobody receive what you say. You operate on this. Now that you understand how to be a cheerful giver, you be a cheerful giver when you understand where your money going. You go to work. This is all God's plan. You go to work and you do a good job. And then you get 10%. And the 10% that you give, give to the people that kept that house clean that kept made made sure everything in the church was right so that the leader who has the word can preach the word and he be fed and then the people that got the tithes who were doing all the work would give 10 percent of what they made to the person who was hearing the word from god why because god wanted that pastor to understand your focus is the word you don't have to worry about houses and land I want to feed you. Your family will eat. But what did we do? We stole from the people and we gave to the leader and we choked the life out of the people and the people hate God and God's word and the leader who said they heard from God. And then we told him, said, you give me the tithe. God said, I ain't never asked you for nothing else. If you want to give something else, that was voluntarily. But if you want my order of operation, you go to work and do a good job. And then you get 10%. And then the people that's keeping my house clean for you, making sure that you, when you come down the road, that your car not tearing up because the road not fixed. All everything about me is looking good, set apart, because I'm going to show up. Because the priest been so focused in reading the word and not talking out of his head. I went on blind Sunday and every preacher was talking out of his head. There was no book laid before them trying to give you a word of encouragement. God said, I didn't call you for that. I'll kill you for that. I, this is the word of God. That's why I say I share it because I need it. And it makes sense to me. I go to work and I get 10%. And then the 10% that I give go to the people that provided the place so that we can have a place to come and worship. And then they said, let us give 10% after we get ours, the Levites said. The Levite being the folk that mowed the yard, painted the paint house, the back of the carpet, they put the tissue in the bathroom, they gave water, they cut the lights on, they made, made sure that the street was correct, make sure that you parked in the right section. The people that we call volunteers, those were the people that were supposed to get the tithes parking lot attendants. That's what the word said. Go back and read it. And, and, and um, Everybody that we told that was to be volunteers in the church, you were the people that God said supposed to get the tithe. People that's, if you've got a group of people that's showing up and they're doing the drama department and they're, they're doing the 
Don't put all this stuff in there if you can't get them for right to divide them. All them thousands of people that you got working in the church, the tithes belong to them. Not extra offerings, the tithes. And then once they get their portion, then they give it to the person who's hearing from God. And that's how we said, where do I pay my offering? Why? Because it makes sense. I talk to y'all because I'm getting ready to get into 19. I'm going to eat this. That's word. Go back and check it. Bye.